I'm Thor Moody, uh, Product uh, Education and Training Specialist for Delorier. I'm here to talk to you today about the slump test. This is a slump set, which consists of a cone, a base, a scoop, and a rod. ASTM-C143 talks about the slump test. Uh, we will follow C143 through this procedure. Uh, there are lots of videos out there about how to do a slump test. This is one of them, but there's only one way to do it right. You can see that we've gotten everything wet, uh, and you need to do that before you use this equipment, and then it's that much easier to clean when you're done. For running the slump test, we use the large rod, the 5 8 rod. This one is graduated uh, so that you can measure with the rod if you need to, if you don't want to use a, uh, a tape measure. The cone is filled in three increments, one third by volume. So the first third only comes to about here. The second third will come up to about here. And then the final third, almost half the height of the cone. Each rod or each lift of concrete, I should say, is rotted 25 times, starting at the outside and working your way in a spiral fashion to the middle. When you rod each additional layer of concrete, it should penetrate the underlying layer by about one inch. You don't vibrate it, you don't jar it, you don't do anything, you just fill it that way. So we're gonna start by getting some concrete here. And by the way, do what you want. Uh, you can Google concrete burns if you want. Wear gloves. This isn't a safety video, but I'm telling you, wear gloves. When you put this in here, and this is clamped to the base, you could stand on these foot tabs as well to hold it in place. You move the scoop around as you're putting the concrete in the mold or the slump cone so that it's evenly distributed in the cone. One more of those and we're good to go. We'll now take our graduated tamping rod We'll start on the outside, so I'm gonna measure this to the bottom. Then I'm gonna raise it so it doesn't hit the bottom. Okay, and then I'm gonna start on the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, two, three, four, and five. Now we'll put in the next lift of concrete. And while I'm doing this, I'll tell you that when you're running a slump test, the slump test has to be completed within two and a half minutes of when you start it. Okay, and one more of those. This concrete is a little bit wet, but it's for demonstration purposes. If you're on a job site, it might not be quite this wet. Now we're gonna measure this so that it penetrates down to there right about there. And we'll start on the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll quit counting. That was probably 25. Now we're going to top it off. And it should be pretty much a like number of scoops to top this off. Now the final placement of concrete in this should come above the rim of this slump cone so it's piled up a little bit in the middle because it will want to subside as you rot it. And then you wanna keep a scoop of concrete handy so that you can keep this topped off. So what we're gonna do is measure this down to about there and we're gonna say there and give ourselves a little room for our hand. And now we're gonna go around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two, three, four, five. And that all stayed there, so we didn't need the extra concrete. If that did subside a little bit, you could just keep adding concrete to keep it topped off. Now we're just gonna use the tamping rod. We're gonna strike this off smooth, but we're not gonna finish it. We're just gonna strike it smooth and remove this excess concrete. And any concrete that's accumulated on this base should be removed. Now when you 
lift this cone to run the actual test, all the concrete must be remain on this base. If it comes off the base in any way, the test is no good, it has to be redone. If the concrete falls over to the side, the test is no good, it has to be redone. Uh, when you raise the cone, it should be in a count of five to seven seconds. Trust me, you can't hold this concrete up, it is going to slump. So we'll hold this down with one hand, we'll remove these foot tabs, or these holding tabs, grab it with both hands, and in five to seven seconds, we're going to raise the cone. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. We've got a little bit of concrete that's come off the edge here, but not very much. This is pretty wet, as I said. Now, there are two ways to measure this. We can use this swing arm and just raise this up and measure down from there right to the middle of this mass of concrete. Which in this case would be right to there. There. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to mark it with my finger. And that is an eight and a half inch slump, which is what I predicted. Another way to measure this is to take the cone, put this swing arm back down. You need to be careful manipulating all this stuff that you don't disturb the, the concrete sample. And you can sit this on there and lay the tamping rod or another straight element across this and then measure down that way, okay? So it's a matter of personal preference. That's the slump test. Now, when you're doing a slump test, uh, ASTM C143 and, and the C31, which is a standard for making test specimens, allows you to reuse this concrete. So you can take this, put it back in your sample, reintegrate the sample, reblend it, remix it, and then you can use it to make uh, test specimens uh, for strength. So we're just gonna take this used concrete and we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna dump it right back in our wheelbarrow. You don't wanna leave this laying around like this very long. You wanna make sure you get it cleaned pretty quick. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, call our office.